whether they're security related. Don't you think this is the real reason why General, they're not General, uh, General Eliaza, can I come to you? Because uh, a lot has been written in the press about the army's economic interests, and we've seen estimates as high as something like 40% of the economy that they control in some form or other. Um, how keen are they to protect their economic positions and their, privi me, and their privileges? Okay, let me correct first that they are, they, it's not 40%, it's 16 to 18%, and it's only in a small industry. They don't have uh, a cement factory or then have steel factory or car factories. What they have is a bottled water factories, olive oil factories, garment factories. So they're not interested, that's what they do. Uh, that's that's reality and and, uh, and dairy dairy products so they are not running there is no banks belongs to, to the army there is no uh, heavy industry or even mid to heavy industry belongs to them so what they do now is 16 to 18 percent only from a very small industries which they are keeping and and most of it goes to a special uh, supermarkets uh, uh, start, starting with they wanted to sell only these items to the military families, and then people said, no, we would like to buy it because it's a good quality with a good price. So everybody now can go and buy this kind what of thing. What about construction one, and arms? One more thing. Let, let him just come what back about to others? this. I'm not really sure. I didn't what, finish. Where do, where I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance <laughs> to finish. But, but I, think this is, I think this is an underestimation of, of, the, economic, of yeah. the economic role of the military in the country. We're talking about construction. We're talking about arms. We're talking about a lot of heavy industries that the army is involved in, you know, the military factories. Okay. They do also other things in addition to the okay. supermarkets and the rice. So and you the don't want to have military factories uh, because you want to, to buy all your arms from outside. So you don't, it's, it, they are banned from doing, uh, trying to build their own military. No, I'm not uh, saying military, they should be banned. Uh, I'm saying these things exist. So, no, no, I'm just saying that they exist. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying that they, they should and, be banned. And one, more, one more issue. Yes, they, they do some contracting and they do it very well. For instance, when you, when you go to see the, the road from Cairo to, uh, to Sukhna, it's the best, I think, highway in Egypt. Really and it's built by them, not, not because of making money, but because of serving people. That's the idea. The, 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 they, have this, this, they have these companies to serve people, not to make money. We're because not they don't want to make money out of it. We're not questioning the question. They don't please, have any please, privilege. Let, let, if let, they want let, privilege, let, they take. I think, I think the question was also about the special protections that the military will want for its economic interests moving forward. I think it's interesting that they amended the Code of Military Justice to give military prosecutors sole jurisdiction over any charges related to corruption within the military. I think Mamdouh Shahid... Corruption Shahi, in the military? This, no, any, Name any one. Char I wasn't saying that. I was corruption, saying... Corruption? Military? Please, I was saying let, let the, clarify, the, the, the amendment to the Code of Military Justice said that any complaints related to corruption go to the military prosecutor. Mm. So the interest here is to centralize any so they want to themselves. That's not Because they're they doing many, many corruption. That, they don't want to, anybody to know it. I am and that's why they're going to do it by themselves. I'm saying just that this is a reflection it. of. Is that what you're the, saying? I'm saying this is a reflection of the military's interest in preserving its own immunities. And General Mandouh Shaheen's comments back in June, I think, is very illustrative to this respect. He said that an army should not be subject to the whims of a new president that you should have special immunities in the Constitution and that nothing related to the military budget should be discussed in the new parliament. I do see this as a, the army's attempt to protect what its kind own of economic interests. They don't interest. have any immunity. They don't, they're not even allowed to go to polls and put their votes. They are, they are banned from and, that and by I law. They I cannot hope, vote for anybody. And I hope it will That's stay this way. I hope it will stay this way. I'm just saying that these are the, the comments by, Genua, uh, by General Mandou Shaheen at the time in terms of the Constitution. Okay, so going I'm forward, okay, I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the middle there. Yes, you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, if I'm serving the people and I'm really looking for their needs and respecting their revolutionary demands, then why till today I don't see one single initiative from the military or the caretaker government that supposedly they are directing the, co the country to do so? So I would... To do what? To do the reforms, to move on and give me a plan. At the same time, I have to say on the other side that most of the political parties are fragmented, fragmented in their leadership. And you have to realize that people were not going to wait for one single person to Minza to come to the street to talk to them. You have to go all and talk to them. Don't imitate Muslim Brotherhood, don't imitate military. Okay. Just go ahead and all talk right. to people. We're not, we're not negating that at all. Actually, I do ag agree with, with your points and I thank you for it. What we're saying is it's not really logical for the military, whichever authority in the country right now, to try and put these so-called political <coughs> parties, which have been just established a few months ago, and say that this is our political reform. This is not enough by any means. This is not what the revolution wanted. This is not what the people that died, died for, really. It wasn't because that we wanted some so-called <coughs> political entity on the street. Huh? We wanted more real, genuine reform. Okay, this is Professor our motion Sultan, today. you want to come in on this? Uh, well, uh, 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 again, it's, uh, 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 we, need, we need better definition for the situation. And the polemics are not really leading this country uh, one, one step ahead. 
the, the, uh, the, the, the fact that the, the, the serious problem we're having is the fragmentation as the, of, the, of the genuine democratic forces. And this is what leaves us with an unbalanced political arena with the, the army and the remnants of the old regime on the other hand and the Islamic forces on the other hand. We are squeezed in between those. And we have to think politically, not just in legal, formal ways, in about the role of the different parties, different actors, particularly the army. And I think if we begin as political parties, and you're representing one of them, thinking this way, perhaps we'll be able to search to find a kind of a constructive compromise ways out of this rather than uh, uh, being squeezed okay. again in this, in this dilemma. All right, all right. Mohamed Benza, you want to... The others but this is, I mean, come back briefly. Well, this, is, this is exactly my point, Tim, here. This is exactly my point. The military is saying that with these parties that are not yet really parties, they're still in the process of building, we have reform. What I'm arguing for is that, no, this is not reform. And the, the, the actual forces that built, that made this revolution, are still not in these parties, and it will take them a long time to be in these parties. So it's their choice. In they addition, in addition, to, to be out. and it will take time, and it will happen. So the equation, I'm sorry, the equation that, that you refer to is actually the military, the parties, and the people. Huh? The people that made this revolution are not yet mostly in parties. It's are not their choice. The military. They didn't do it. Okay. We cannot force so them to do it. I'm not forcing them. I'm saying listen to them. The challenge they, they, they don't want to listen do it. To I'm asking myself based on that. In the coming, in the coming so. election, when people are going to vote for a simply that right <laughs> will draft our constitution, who will be elected if the revolutionary forces and new political parties are not okay. ready yet? All right. What I'm kind of future is waiting for us? As okay, a I'm going to take one quick question from the lady in the front row there. Yes, I'll ask the gentleman. Uh, you argue that the military is interested in real reform. Very briefly, how can you explain crushing people by military cars at Maspero and attacks on media? Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, you know that the uh, SCAF and government uh, uh, formed actually uh, a committee headed by the Assistant Minister of Justice uh, to come with a report very soon about the incident. And uh, actually, th there are six people in the, in, the, in the committee headed by the Assistant Minister of Justice and three other <coughs> judges with, with him in the same committee. And they will come back with the report. So I think you are now just uh, uh, before reading and hearing what they're going to say, you judged already that, that, the, that the army did that. Let me tell you, we have a video, and I don't like to publicize that, but many, in many Facebook uh, 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 sites, you can go and watch a guy, I don't want to say his name, he's working for another TV uh, channel, and he said, I saw, and he filmed that, a t-shirt, red t-shirt guy, actually uh, driving the armored vehicle, who actually crushed people. Sir, sir, can I? Go and look at him. This is the Egyptian army. You're telling me that I the Egyptian... This is the Egyptian army. You're telling me that the Egyptian army, will, their car will be robbed just like my car gets yes, robbed? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't, I mean, it's not convincing. They, 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 so this, actually, if this happened, this is the a sign of the poor actually, security the that the army is perpetuating. by yeah. 10 people on the floor. If, th this is a sign finished. of the poor security. I didn't, I didn't, okay. This is, if the army can be robbed, then this is a sign of the, secu the poor security that we are all living under, and that's in of, of itself. Can I, can I tell you something? Of failure of you will never this is, see this again. Mm -hmm. Promise you. You okay, will never, okay. You will oh. never see this again. On that because note, they will it's treat too late. it. They will treat it. They will treat it differently next time. Okay, if there is a next time. Okay. Hopefully on that note, we're we're coming close to the end of our time. <laughs> we're coming close to the end of our time. I'm going to ask each of the panelists if they can crystallize their views just before you go to the vote uh, to sum up their opinions and to give you one sentence each. And we're going to start at this end of the table and we'll go back through the general. Just one sentence, no, Mohammed Mansa. You start, please. One ladies, sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, from what has been said today, the military is not interested in real or genuine reform. Apparently, the revolution is still going and needs to be going further, and the people need to be part of it further and further. So the military apparently is not interested in real and genuine okay. reform. The military isn't interested in genuine reform because of its own involvement in the abuses, its failure to respond to them by investigating and prosecuting, its failure to uphold okay. genuine reform that would actually change the practices that everybody rebelled against in Professor, January. Professor Sautam, one sentence. It is, it is not about the actual violations, and a lot of violations are taking place. It's about the, the role that the, the army is functionally performing in taking care and pushing the case for reform in this country. And I think 
Functionally, they do. There are a lot of mistakes, but functionally, considering how the configuration of political forces are, Islamism, liberals, okay. and the people are, I think they, they serve a good uh, cause right. towards reform. General Saif al What we're doing now is we're taking one mistake or one issue, and we're talking about it and trying to make uh, a snowball out of it. Let's, let's see the entire picture and judge the entire picture. Okay. If we judge that, maybe 70-80% was, was with, with, the, with the decisions uh, they made. I think it's correct. Okay. The rest, I have some okay. mistakes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the point now we're going to vote on the motion. This House believes the Egyptian military is not interested in genuine reform. Would you please take your voting machines? Let me just explain to you how they work. If you want to vote for the motion, that is the side represented by those on my right, you're going to need in a moment to press the number one button. If you want to vote against the motion, that is the side represented by those on my left, you press button two, and whichever button it is that you want to press, please do it now. You only have to press once. Thanks to the miracles of modern science, your vote will be communicated to the computers, and we should have the result for you in about 15 seconds. There's the vote. Eight. 84.7% for the motion. 15.3% against the motion has been resoundingly carried. All it remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thanks. Thank you to you, the audience. The Doha Debates will be back again next month. Till then, from all of us here in Cairo, have a safe journey home. Thanks for coming. Good night.